Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So let us continue with the female reproductive system. In this particular video we shall consider the mammary glands. So we have uh, considered in the introduction that the mammary glands are also the part of the female reproductive system. Okay. So the mammary glands which are present within the breast. Okay. So, uh, breast which are paired in nature. So, each breast it is a hemispherical projection which may be variable in size and it is located anterior to this pectoralis major and serratus anterior muscles okay, and it is attached to them by a layer of fascia. Okay, so, that is the fascia which is a layer of dense irregular connective tissue which supports each breast. Now, each breast has a pigmented projection, a centrally located pigmented projection, this is the one. So, that is the nipple. Okay. So, this nipple contains a series of closely spaced openings of ducts called as lectiferous ducts. So, these are the lactiferous ducts which are opening onto the surface of the nipple which is actually conveying the milk towards the exterior. Okay. Now, surrounding the nipple there is one more pigmented area of the skin and this area is known as areola. Areola means small space. Okay, and it appears rough because it comprises of modified sebaceous glands that is the oil glands. Okay. Now, there are several ligaments which actually supports the breast okay, and these are known as the suspensory ligaments of the breast or Cooper's ligaments. Okay, so, these are the strands of connective tissues which run in between the skin and the fascia. So, this is the skin, this is the layer of the skin and this is the fascia, right? This is the one. So, in between these two that is the skin and the fascia run a number of connective tissue strands and these are known as the suspensory ligaments of the breast or these are also known as the Cooper's ligament. So, the, the main function is supporting the breast. Okay. So, with age these ligaments may become looser. Also, with excessive strain which may occur during jogging or high impact aerobics also may uh, lead to these ligaments becoming loose. So, this can be prevented by wearing a supportive bra. So, this will prevent the process of uh, these suspensory ligaments from being looser. Okay. So, they, it helps in maintaining the strength of the suspensory ligaments which are supporting the breast. Okay. Now, within each breast is located a memory gland. So, memory gland it is actually a modified sudoriferous gland. Sudoriferous glands means sweat glands. So, these are modified sweat glands that will produce the milk. Okay. So, a memory gland it comprises of around about 15 to 20 lobes or you can say compartments. These may be separated by a variable amount of adipose tissue. As you can see this is the adipose tissue. So, you can see that a number of compartments are present within the breast. right? So, there are around about 15 to 20 such lobes within each breast. Okay. So, again this lobe is divided into further smaller compartments known as the lobules. Okay. So, these are the lobules. Okay. So, these are the lobules which are composed of grape like clusters which secrete the milk. Okay. So, these grape like structures remember this term alveoli we have also seen that the clusters of these alveoli are also present in the 
lungs right so similar structures are present in the mammary gland as well okay so this is a since the appearance is just like grape like cluster which comprises of milk secreting glands called as alveoli so these are embedded in the connective tissue <coughs> which are actually responsible for production of the milk now the contraction of the myoepithelial cells which are surrounding these alveoli these will help to propel the milk further into the duct system which will carry it towards the nipple and towards the exterior so the milk when it is being produced it passes from the alveoli into a series of small tubules called as secondary tubules so from these alveoli as the milk is being produced it will enter into these secondary tubules right these are the ones okay these are the ones from here it will be carried into the further ducts known as mammary duct okay the second type of duct into which the milk will enter from the secondary tubule it will enter into the mammary duct okay and near the nipple as the mammary duct it reaches near the nipple it expands to form the lactiferous sinuses okay lactiferous sinuses lact means milk so it is expanded as you can see so here it is known as lactiferous sinuses so these are the spaces where some amount of milk may be stored before it is drained into the next type of duct that is lactiferous duct okay so each lactiferous duct it carries the milk from a single lobe okay so from one lobe the milk which is produced it will be carried into the secondary tubule from here it will enter the mammary duct and from here it will enter the lactiferous sinuses okay so this is the flow of the milk and from lactiferous sinuses where it can be stored temporarily before it is ejected out and then it will move towards the exterior through the lactiferous duct okay so coming to the functions of this mammary glands so mammary glands the function is to yes synthesize secrete and eject the milk so collectively all these functions together are known as lactation which is associated with pregnancy and childbirth okay, so milk production which is stimulated by the hormone prolactin remember the hormone prolactin which is secreted by the anterior pituitary so this stimulates the milk production by the mammary glands which is of course uh, contributed again by other hormones like progesterone as well as the estrogen okay? and the ejection of milk that is the movement of milk out of the mammary glands through the ducts it is mainly stimulated by the oxytocin now this oxytocin hormone is released from the posterior pituitary in response to the suckling action by the infant so as the infant is sucking the mother's nipple it sends the signals to the posterior pituitary which secretes the hormone oxytocin and this in turn will result in ejection of the milk okay so lactation will take place so it is under the control the production of the milk is mainly by the prolactin and the ejection of the milk it is controlled by the hormone oxytocin okay so this is to do with the mammary glands this is the reference for my presentation thank you for watching